Not a surprise, Time really. Uh, a wonky looking draft from TNT in game number one. Can they overcome that, though, and put a one on the board in game number one? Let's head to the papers and find out. Thank you very much, Paul. Yes, a best of three here in the lower bracket between Optic Gaming and TNC. I'm Odie Pixel. I'm here with Bulldog for this best of three. And this should be a fun one. We're seeing some new heroes. Bulldog TNC with the fifth pick. Winter Wyvern. Do, do you like it? Not a huge fan, but <laughs> and it's last hope here of Optic. This is pretty hype. Yeah. And a lot on the line here. They need to get top four to get to that TI invite. <laughs> if they can do it. Yeah. I mean, the Wyvern, it, 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 sort of in theory, it, it seems pretty good because you've got that that D push against the army, the Chen and the Beastmaster. You've got sort of that save from anyone that gets gone on by the Lifestealer and the Bloodseeker. Of course, the Cold Embrace is going to be quite useful as well in that regards. But then again, it is the Wyvern. And there's the, the, the reasons why we just do not see this hero uh, being sort of the go to support. For sure, for sure. And uh, since we heard uh, Nahas saying that Optic would win, it would be a good thing to bet for TNC right now because Nahas, he relies too much on those stats and usually is wrong. So. Already, see how those stats will look out as NC. I'm gonna go for the chase down onto 33. They've got the homing miss on that. It is your first blood. Who's gonna be able to take it? Great. We'll claim it for himself. And this is the guy who's been uh, carrying Optic a lot as well. So you really want him to have a good game. So not not a good start here at all. We'll see how much pressure TNC do put down on that, that bottom lane at the moment. Tim's see where he's looking to head. Look that mid lane where Carmel versus CC and C BK versus Bloodseeker will go down. Oh, no, no. Oh, with that courier. This is going to be an interesting matchup here. Definitely going to need top of DK here. So we rotated the Tim's here. Very smart. Because he can easily get really out of hand to Bloodseeker. As we've seen many times, he can just destroy a lane. Yeah, he's got no health now. Very smart here. Uh, Tim's presence with the, with the spam. Find an issue here for CCNC at the start, but we'll try and lifesteal it as well. Back up. It's middle lane. Another wraparound coming in from Tim's. Oh, no. He's going to get the curry on the way back. He's got that perfect angle to spot it out. He knows that it just come down, and Tim's indeed will wrap around and take that curry away from Optic. With a taunt as well. So that's on CCNC, not seeing that coming. And uh, just keep getting harassed there. Not looking too hot. And meanwhile, top, we're doing the casual pull. We got we got the Chen here. We don't see it a lot. Only a few teams pick it. And should be fine here. Oh, I mean, you say he should. I think uh, he's dead for he, uh, he, he just ran into <laughs> Chen. I'm not sure. He's a professional player. So he just runs into Chen. Sure. <laughs> that, I, don't, I got nothing to say there. No I mean, analysis a, needed. A level one Chen with the Orba Venom beaten down on a Doom and getting the kill. Interesting. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. That's a side, uh, side Chen as well, which is... Very different. Before we used to have a uh, PPD Chen, didn't work out so well. So you need to have someone that actually have an impact on that hero. They've made um, the changes. Very smart here. Put Peter back on his bane, which he does love. We've seen many times in the past. Mid lane, CS has a gun about 10 for 5 against the 5 for 2, thanks to Tim. So Armel is having a very good time against CCNC. Yeah, definitely needed to do this, but this means that the other lanes are getting a little bit. A little bit tougher here for bottom. Definitely uh, a scary lane here with the Beastmaster and Bane putting lots of pressure on the on the gyro. 5-0. So it's a, it's a trade-off, right? You trade middle for bottom a little bit because if the scary is bottom, it'll be very different. Do, do you like that trade for, for, from TNC's perspective? The fact that they they still shut down the Bloodseeker first and will prioritize the gyro later. Yeah, for sure, because uh, Jarrah is a more comeback hero. He can easily farm back, so it's it's okay. We've seen this many times where he falls a little bit behind and. He still comes back, so no, no issues there. And as we've said, uh, the Bloodseeker can just get out of control sometimes, yeah. just destroying a mid lane. So it makes a lot of sense. Uh, rotation to come in from Zai wasn't successful in finding any action on time. At least he does have the two points already in the Dragon's Blood. Bottom lane missile out to PPD. 33 just keeping the Axe Spam high, keeping uh, Cuckoo's health incredibly low. Since he gets that extra bit of boost of damage and move speed in the mid lane. The Chen here, he wants to go for a kill. Tim's is coming forward as well with the TP. So, so 2 feet 2 CCNC opening up onto Armour. They have got the clap of the blood rail. Pop the stick charge into the right click. Should be enough, and they are. Easy, Zai, easy clap by the helper there. 
Going to kill. At the same time, down bottom for TNC. They make a play in return. They go forward onto PPD with the missile. Cuckoo and Raven surround him. PPD. He'll try and run himself away. Got the wand. He has got a Can ferret a fire as well. Time. He's not put the TP into his but now he has. But six seconds, I don't know if he's getting away. I don't think it will. Is the sky off will come across not as well? Not even nightmare to save some more time. Questionable play there by PPD. Yeah, I guess tip uh, for that one as well. Instantly with a tip back. <laughs> yeah, but that's, when you look at the master, that's not even that good for them. And meanwhile, Raven just dies to the channel. Oh, I mean, Zai. He's, he's got all three kills so far. He's, he's got a kill up top. He's got a kill in mid. And now he's got a kill down bottom. He's literally killed all three cores. And as good as Zai is doing, you can see he kind of had to throw away that lead a little bit. Questionable, but it's still fine. And it had chase on thing there. It cost him so much. I'm just they're chasing him all. Look at this one. Look at Zai. He's a four minute earn on the chat. Yep. No boots. Get that earn. He He's knows. like, I'm getting kills. Let's get some charges, boy. That is a very high advanced play. My goodness. PPD is trying something as well here. See what he can do. Zai is coming across. He's able to go. It's close underneath the tier one tower, so they'll be a little hesitant on diving. But TNC have to watch out for Zai on the prowl across this map. A lot of action right now. They're going to dive again, maybe. Look, he's going to send the Smasher back to heal up. Oh, my PPD. Let's we'll see if they can find something. Wars Cuckoo. We'll just have to back uh -oh. up now as actually Zai is going to bring the army back in, see if we can use them to hold back the advance onto him. That final bit of burst should be enough to get him, and it is. Zai will fall. As TNC are able to punish him, roaming towards the mid. PPD facing towards Cuckoo, but he is on. Sort of on his own. Does have the uh, neutral creep still from Zai with him. Will yep. not chase down. And more action middle. All right, non-stop action. Here we go. You can see, I don't think Zai can save this one. As the right clicks come through. That again, Tim. Mango. He finds it each and every time, Tim. Zai will get Cuckoo in return. So there we go. Uh, he's got the iron charges. Yeah, non-stop action middle. But this means that the other two lanes are not going that well for TNC at all. You see the gyro here, 10 CS only. 10 CS. This is a disaster for them. And even top, Doom is farming fine at top. But it's a life stealer, and he, he's a very strong laner against any melee. And so. I mean, and you said, well, the, the gyro has to come back. But when he's this far behind, it's ever so hard, surely. Yeah, for sure, for sure. This is not looking good at all. And yeah, the Doom is going to hit 6 in, which could lead to a kill at life stealer if they do rotate. See what they can do here as the Tims goes forward. They will be able to claim the tower optic. 33. Um, we'll have to give his life up for that, but he gets the tower and at the same time CC and C actually takes down Armel. The rotation from Chen again. Thai just doing so much work on this Chen here. This is why we've seen he's been banned so much against Optic. Yeah, he's absolutely crushing. The top lane Pi Cat. Chasing down Sam H. Sam H will be fine. Able to back off, turn Radiant around with the Infernal Blade. But Pyka, he's getting an absolute free farm from this top lane. 52 for 8 on the last hits. I mean, you just compare that to Raven CS and it, it, it's, not, it's not even close. Yep. And uh, either rotation top now for, for either team can be really deadly for the opponent. Yeah, just more, more every so much focus in the middle here, trying to stop the Bloodseeker, which has been kind of successful. And again, just going for the middle of the jungle. That's smoking up. Now it's seven minutes in. Don't look towards the bottom of the, the map, uh, Bulldog. You might have a heart attack around that spot. <laughs> As it, 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 they haven't picked it up. Are we cool? No. Okay. Bane baiting. Beautiful play by people there. Baiting. The juke by Raven there, getting out alive. He's, he reads it. He, he's aware. Wow. Both of them get out there. Understanding the uh, situation just... Puts up, sees the enemy with the ward. Beautiful. 33 having his six. It's a, it's a scary lane for Raven to be in. Denied. They do move him round towards the mid lane, maybe hoping they can look to set up something onto CCNC, but it's still level five on the Jarret. Haven't got that cooldown really for the big slow and setup. And it's Raven will have to resort to just farming up some of these neutral creeps. Just so he's at least getting something out of this stage of the game. Hold on. PD hunting for Cuckoo. They'll cut through the tree line. Cuckoo trying to fly his way over the trees, but they've found him. You right clicks and oh, okay. There we go. They should have him there. Brains out. Oh, it's not enough damage. Cuckoo, he's gonna live. And now PPD. Oh, it did. 
Oh, they painted it. Probably should have ulted. You would have done it, just gone with the roll? Yeah. Just guarantee the kill. Exactly why you would do it. That's, that's one of those like, ah, yeah, am I wasting my ult? Is, yeah. But that, that's a little cool line. You yeah. definitely ult there in hindsight now. PPD dies. Not, not very good. And, and again, from mid, we're going here. And they get the kill. It looks pretty dead to me. Yeah, Unless you get TP. Double damage rune on CCNC. And even if it oh. tries to TP, they've got the troll trap. But looks like that done. Running in there is super scary. You yeah. get countered so hard there. DK's a tanky hero, of course. So yeah, they got a very aggressive lineup here, Optic. The only uh, problem is that they have the life so They don't have that normal blink initiation here. No Slarda, no Puck or Cop or anything like that. Yeah. So it's going to be hard for this life to get into the fight and just hit people. But he is, I mean, he's continuing to have a, a just a, a totally free time up top. He's got 75 CS, nine and a half minutes. The Relic is going to come in very good time towards the Radiance that he wants to grab this game. Because TNC, they're not putting any focus towards that top lane at all. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Because there's two ways you play Life Seed. Either you do that bomb with uh, maybe Armit and Desolate or something like that. Which you don't have, so you go the, uh, the other build, which is Radiance. Because yeah. you're in the middle of the fight all the time, you just drain them. Now, looks towards Sam H. He does get doomed though. The life still is. Pycat will start to back off. PPD pops the Nightmare down onto one. They've got the Rupture onto Sam H. Optic a little hesitant as Atmail does sweep his way across. PPD will die, but the rest of Optic Gaming are able to escape. You've been misreading the situation a little bit there again. Now going in when the rest of the team kind of backing, so he gets caught out. Probably shouldn't have died there, but hey, no, this is a big. Now bottom, 33. We'll see if he uses the raw this time. As he's hunting, but Cuckoo no. get himself out of vision and over the trees. So again, another escape from Cuckoo. As he runs away from the Beastmaster up top, Zai being chased down by Sam H. Sam H will not be able to chase down any longer. And even though they got so many kills on uh, from Optic, they got kills everywhere, right? And it doesn't really matter. Chan had uh, such a good game, but and the lane looks really well. Uh, the guy was super punished. But the, the climbing fine. The network is very even. So not having a, a free farm, the uh, butt seeker looking pretty good now for TCNC. I thought it might have been snowball out of control. So the only issue right now is the radiance, of the life stealers. If that's gonna come in and do a big impact on this match. Yeah, it's as we said, it's gonna be a very good timing for like that. No doubt about that. About 400 gold away from the relic. Zai and PPD smoking up, ready to make movements around either that top lane or middle lane. Put the walls down as well towards mid. A good, good vision. They may just catch Tims and Sam H as they head over this way, and it looks like Zai will open up on Tims. Actually, if the stun off it doesn't look like he can, as Sam H and Tims just burst him down. Zai not in the position he wants to be. Probably a little mis micro there. I think he thought. He stunned the, early, didn't he? Yeah, he thought the central was a satire or something, so I don't know. A little bit missed micro there, but that's fine. No big deal, just lose both of the creeps. Actually, that's not fine. One of the most frustrating things, playing that hero. He's got to find a new arm now. Yeah. We've seen a Beastmaster going for the, the aggressive medallion build. We've seen him do it before, and it's it's so much damage from this hero. Which means I just want to keep pressuring. But now, a few unsuccessful ganks here, which means they probably need to pull, pull back a little bit and wait for, um, for Life Sealer Radiance. He's almost got it. The relic coming up. Very good levels as well for Pycat, as he hasn't really needed consistent backup on this top lane because it has just been a doom in his lane. Sam H for the most part. Four hero rotation now though. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. There's no no way they can live it without a doom though. Really difficult. Going to be hard to close the gap, especially underneath this tier one tower. TP rotations can be guaranteed from Optic. But they know that they, they sort of have to do something. They know that Pycat has been free farming. He's not got anything in his inventory. They know that he will be going for that Radiance, Radiance and they do ideally want to try and stop him before he does get his hands on that Relic. Nothing normally you would just see the bottom to get the tower, but that tower has already been taken and they're diving a little deep here. Oh, three men TP. Everybody's coming in for 33. The slow is there. He'll try for the TP out there. Anyway, to cancel in time, they do with the Winter's Curse from Cuckoo. They'll hold down 33, and they will be able to punish him for pushing out this bottom lane. Yeah, Cuckoo learning from uh, 33's mistake. They're just ult to get the kill. Just ult. Simple as that. This gives uh, much needed space for Lifestealer, because he's really weak right now. He needs that Radiance, and that's when 
it should start to show some aggression. We'll see how this works out for TNC. They, as I say, they really have just let PyCat free farm this Radiant. Yeah, and the game really slowed down a lot from, from the start here, which I would definitely think favors TNC. Their late game looks pretty scary. Uh, mediocre farm, the Buzzing is not as scary as, as other heroes. Set up. So Sam, in they go. PyCat, CCNC, the rough and the right click. Sam, mate, no escape. As Opti pick up another from this top in PyCat's game. To to go from better to better. So they'll take this tier one tower as well. Still though, Raven, the network fine. He's now continuing, continuing to stay level with CCNC. Armel also has that advantage over CCNC thanks to that help from Tim's in the lane. And it's getting closer and closer to his Blink Dagger, about 1600 towards the Blink Dagger and the Dragon Up. And then TNC themselves can start to, to look to make plays and maybe even try and get that kill onto Pycat. Yeah, and the DK decides to go for a Dagger, which is the, that's kind of what they need because they like that yeah. initiation with this team, so it makes a lot of sense. And you got the Gyro and uh, Doom to do a lot of damage and the Survivor, of course, so you don't really need to go for that like carry DK build. So this is, makes a lot of sense. And, uh, yeah. The game is very slow right now. Just, ha just how Optic want to play it with that 15 minute Radiance, Radiance complete on Pie Cap. That is fast. And he's even shoving in the middle lane inside of an Ancient. Moving that is good. Very aggressively keeping TNC sort of on the back foot in terms of having to react to this. Top tower and uh, getting that space for Optic to Dyer's push the middle wave in and claim another tier one tower. That is true, and uh, Bond now, did he get this tower? He's getting two towers, even if it everyone, and right now it's a scary time for TNC. They know that the Radiant timing is up, and you don't really want to fight into this. You definitely need a dagger on B uh, DK before you can fight anything, and even then it's pretty scary, because you got the Doom, which normally is one of the strongest spells in the game, but then you're playing as a Chen. Yeah. And then you just send him back, and it, it's pretty hard to play again. Radiance bottom tower. There we go. So this pie cat just giving the slow burn down onto Cuckoo and Cuckoo. We'll get the cold embrace up, but it's not gonna save him from the brain sap. He just fan down, finishes him off with the pure damage, and now the army is pushing in off the bottom lane. TNC, what can they do to stop this? Buyback straight away from the wipe, and they've got the Doom down onto 33, 33 on the retreat. Raven has the cooldown and the flak. Will be able to take down PPD. Can they do anything more? No. Because already the send back there, 33 gets sent back to safety by Zai. TNC only able to claim the PD bank. Can they get anything more? Timbs still trying to chase Zai. Pycat, Pycat thinking about going back in, but he gets silence. Perfect silence into the Dragon Tail. They've got the chain stuff, but they need the save. Zai on the chain, getting Pycat back just in time. Zai will lose his life for it, but he is he's doing so much for the team this game, Zai. That was a lot closer than it should have been. They they were talking, they're like, hey, I'll go in and you send me back. Is it up? Is it up? Yeah, yeah, I'll send you back. And he runs in with Life Stealer. But he was going to rage, but he got silenced before he did that. And it's like, whoa, whoa, that's not good. And just barely, just barely. It could have been so bad. Yeah, absolutely good. I mean, yeah, TNC played that attempt uh, perfectly onto the Life Stealer, as you say, with, it, with the chain control. As long as they get that seal before the, the rage, they do have very good direction of stun to follow up. So indeed, the save. It is 12 to 7 for TNC, but still that 2k advantage for Optic. And the fact that you imagine they will be able to find just that little bit quicker because they do have this Radiant Lifestealer. 33 bottom. Looking for a solo kill. Not really going to happen against a Doom. 1800 health. And the Beastmaster going for uh, the smart kill here, of course. Keeping the Necro Book against yeah. Winter Wyvern. Terrible item against Wyvern because of his ult. And uh, yeah, the Wyvern is a really good pick here because of. Denying the Beastmaster a little bit there, and Beastmaster gives it R as well. So if you do ult someone, you're giving they're hitting so fast, right? With the Winter Curse, so they're gonna do a lot of damage. They're also really good against the uh, Blood Scroll because you don't want to move when Blood Scrolls you, so you got the, the Embrace, right? Kind of counter that a little bit. We got Pie Cap once again on the prowl inside the ancient granite golem. And the smoke coming out here. I got just scouting it out. There really isn't much they can do about the, uh, the life yeah, inside the granite goal. Not looking to be a good smoke because you really want that objective after and all the waves are pushed out and they see that so they know something is happening, right? It's a very basic play. Yeah, we'll try for Roshan out there. 
It's up to gaming, head into the pit. High cap, Bill standing in the middle lane. See how quickly they can do it. They do it. How about a dalian? That chat. They, just get their, they know it's up though, TNC. This is a little bit scary. They've got TNC pretty got good really tank of heroes. Yeah, and with the first hand quarter, and they have good potential around the pit, but the the Cat, he really is just standing and up the front, PPD. keeping them away. PPD will tank him hmm. with his life, but now TNC, they head forward into the road pit. Can they stop this in time? He's pulling in quickly, but already it's down. Opti Gaming, get the road, get the ages. CCNC getting focused, but Raven just melts in the fight on the front of it all. Sam H has been saved momentarily by the corner phrase, but now they'll turn. Look to beat him down the window. Winter's Curse will hold back the two of them as Armel goes forward, but the Axes from 33 cut down the Doom. Mystic Flare down on top of the Life Stealer, but again, Zai with the send back, getting Pycat back to safety. And Zai will be chased down. He does have backup though, CCNC and 33 there with the Blood Right. CCNC drops it down to make sure they don't chase for more, and CCNC will be sent back as well. So they get the rush. they get and the they, Aegis, and they, they, they get it out. The, the Aegis they still intact. Ages. Yeah, that was. Not a good fight in gate side. Just yeah. playing like a god right now. Those sandbags doing so much work. We talked about the counter against Doom. It's showing so well here. And we're sort of seeing that if you're sort of playing this gyro from behind, sure Raven's been able to climb back in, but now he's turned into fights where I mean, you're against the Life Stealer, which for a start sucks as a gyro, and you're also against the Bloodseeker who has, as we saw in that last fight, the Blade Mail. And the Blade Mail just destroyed Raven. Yeah, and it was such a hard fight to go in there because you have to run past. And we see PPD yeah. first here. He's I'm not sure why he runs in. You already have your golem there, so you could just sit with PPD behind here, maybe ulting someone. So a little bit question about PPD again. So look I how think. quick Raven does. Yeah, he, he just melts. Bam. Such such a good uh, good game here for a life stealer, just destroying and Optic looking really strong right now, getting the lead here. In lane, defensive nightmare. The silence is still there, and they actually take that fight. Pycat coming out just for PPD. Now PPD, he gets dove upon as well. TNC just get two free kills. Huh? Dave Abadi Syndrome, as we talked about a little bit in past uh, cast, I've heard. And right there, he's dead. Just get out of there, PPD. You're not a uh, send back Chen there. Still, that kind of stopped the momentum quite a lot. And it's something they really needed on TNC side right here, because it was almost getting out of control a little bit here. Really good kills here. Dyer's middle tower is in Final the Pike, that must have been worth it. Uh, not, not too crazy, man, but it does go the way of Raven, that kill. Crucial on getting him back on track to having that SY complete. Being to now 21 minutes in. Shen going for the Axe. It's one of the really powerful Axe in team fight. Gives much RS. It's so good for split push as well. Makes the game just so tough. If you get this early, you can only get one creep though, you need level 2 ult uh, to get the 2 creeps. Still, the Black Dragons are still good at split pushing. On lane, 33 has been found. Sam H. Armel and Tim. Catching out the Beastmaster as 33 tries to push out alone. Radiance Middle Tower may need a hand. Well, Optic's next play will be they do, of course, as we say, still have that Aegis on CC and see that they will want to try and utilize. Kind of want that mid tower. Now with Beastmaster dead though. Sending up eight here. And they get the initiation. And can we see and see how they who they look fine onto his heart. Dragon against dragon. My cat is winning that fight. That radiance burn pushing Cuckoo back on the side. PPD. But the nightmare into the grip to set up. And suddenly the corner brace comes out in return. They're standing their ground here. Optic moving in. They'll cut down Tims and now turning their attention towards Sam H. They get the Winter's Curse out, which will buy some time for Sam H, but still, the damage looks to be too much. Sam H tries for the Doom, but he can't quite get it out. PPD lost his life. But Optic, they've got the double kill for CCNC. They're bound two for them. Arm out. Trying to retreat. Does Pike out want to pop out and go for this? He won't. He won't go past the tier three tower. Again, what is he doing? Favorable trades in the wide. He's outside of the base. A little bit questionable. And this Radiance with the Ancient Creep, it's, it's, they can't do anything about it. It's just winning them the game right now. And they're just going to go high run at 20 minutes. Not looking to end ahead of the Beastmaster. They're going to push real fast as well. There's three heroes dead. None of them buy back available. Sure, the cooldowns are on the, the top. are pretty low. So they will be back in TNC. They'll be Still without the, the Winter's Curse. CCNC. We have the Aegis being popped, as you say, he does not mind. He's coming towards the end of his direction anyway, and Optic, they uh, the find a tier 3. Doom here. 
So they can back out Savage. Send back. Just like that, and they're back. Leave PPD, it's fine. Oh, there's the counter. So I will get purged by Sam H. He tries to chase it. Up. Just goes straight for the TP. He will not make it. Zarmel comes in with the Dragon Cell. Can they get anything more out of this? And Missile on top of the Ancient. It's now Pycat uh -oh. jumps out. Look manly, this could be bad. With the Rage chasing down Tim's. Tim's taking over the Radiance. Raven does come in from the side. It's a good cooldown and a flag. And in fact, they've just managed to take down Pycat. Get the life stealer, but CCC is he's pretty speedy. Look at him go with the BKB for the Winter's Curse. Cooper holds back the speed of the Bloodseeker. And in fact, I'm out. He's heading back over. He wants to try and fight this, but the grip. PPD has Good the grip. control. CCC keeps him set for live as PPD holds back the dragon just long enough to allow him to get out of there. That's the Nightmare, but the Nightmare taken off by Cuckoo. Will mean that Armel can back off to safety. So both support saving one another's mid laners. PPD saving. That could have been so bad. Both of those scores looked pretty dead to me, and PPD just saving the day right there. The, not only the, the best bank. captain, but the best player in the world. Bank. Beautiful. Get that. They get that tier. They don't get anything more mid than the tier three tower, but that base is pretty huge drop. Take those shrines down now. And they're back up. Yeah, and they probably don't want to wait too long to. Uh, Put on the pressure again here. Uh, level two uh, channels would be really good for the the uh, ancient creeps, but that's gonna be a while. This hero levels really slowly, especially how much they've been five manning. And uh, let's see, are they waiting for any items? Doesn't look like there's anything special coming up. Yeah, they, they just tank up here and just go five again. Yeah, they could just end the game pretty early. And this Radiance Creep with the Ancient has just proven to be so powerful. So they're just going again. If you get a pickup before, that'd be huge. Uh, but he survived. Climbs his way back up. In the high ground. This Winter Wyvern ult is going to be a very crucial ult in this game. He even went for the other lens. Means he's got massive range on that. Could really stop the fight, which is really important against these BKBs they have now under the life stealer. So if that they counter that and make it run out, you can just kind of initiate with the DK stun and the Dolt from Gyro, which could just complete because they're not tanky. This here is not that tanky. Bloodseeker's not a tanky here. Without the BKB he just he just melts a lot of times. Especially if he's got the, the blood rage on him. So you gotta be careful with that. Going for the Maelstrom next, CC and C. So he's about halfway there. The Red Pipecat has his FMY coming out. SMY, of course, done for Raven as Raven towards the Lincoln Sphere next to help him against that blood secret. I mean, a lot of sort of single target from Optic Gaming. Raven wants to be aware of. Yeah, and we're not going to get a super farm Skyra at this game, which sometimes we see just go out of control. He's. Not gonna get an axe anytime soon. And, uh, yeah. Dyer's bottom tower is its in DK turmoil. is pretty strong now, though. All their cores are getting stronger and stronger here, so. Again, I think it's this Wyvern ult that's pretty big in this fight. Could really win the game here. Not sure if Optic wants to wait for this ag or uh, the Roshan. Could delay a bit too much, maybe. But looks like they're gonna play it safe. Just get the uh, get the shrines. Makes a lot of sense. They got so many auras. They got the Beastmaster, the Wolf, the Wildkin, the Golem. They really, really are gearing up towards, as you say, this sort of mid-game push that's going to be very hard for TNC to manage to stop. Here's the road. That's an early road. Really good for them. RNG on Optic side in that sense. Probably put it on uh, Bloodseeker's Pizza here that I can just drop pretty easily. And if you just burst it, it's a disaster. Lifestealer is way harder to kill here, especially as it's in the, the Black Dragon now. And uh, looks like he's taking it anyway. Not a huge fan of that. Oh, yeah, given CCNC the cheese, I mean, we used to, you'd rather see the other way around. Yeah, I'd like that more. Sure, uh, it's not, doesn't matter that much. No. Nah. Um, Bloodseeker is. Got two thousand health, and he's got the Chan heal. So, if they, it's going to be hard to burst him before he gets the cheese off, and here we go again. It just going for that mid game push. Five K lead. 
Not the biggest of leads, but a lead that has just slowly continued to grow for Optic. PNC still yet able to sort of shift the balance this game. Zenai will Chen out. Uh, so the, the gem out onto the Chen. Can keep this map control. He's, he's got the Aghanims. Very well for himself, sight. Yeah, they're deciding not to push middle, just stick around there. Just forcing them to be in the in the base. This normally would be a problem because you just push on sides, but since you have the Chen creeps, you see bottom just gets all the lane push. Farming, so meanwhile, they're just farming all the jungle and opponents. Sitting in base, and sitting in the base is a losing uh, playstyle, of course. Yeah, they're, they're unable to really get out and find any sort of fun. They will try and make the move towards Pycat. It's a very hard target to, to open up on at that Aegis. ENC will let him be. We're going to rotate top now with Optic. Need to stop them. They cannot let them outside the base. And soon as well, 30 minutes coming up. Getting four banner runes is a big deal at this point. So it looks like they're going to get them as well. So this like is it. just manning up. It is just in. Getting some damage in on Thrax he is already. Alpha male. From TNC do to stop that. They, they, he sort of shows mid and then heads straight up towards top. Here we go. 6k lead. Slowly, sort of starving TNC out of the lane. You know what's up? Good player here. I'm gonna give him a clap. And we have it. Hmm. He knows. Feels good. This is especially why you can't sit in base. Yeah. You just. This is just too much because now you're also giving gold to to Bane, and eventually he's gonna have one eye. And if he gets a glimmer of force, that could matter. Yes. So. But he's pretty poor. It's PPD after all. Nah, it's they play him at the precision six, so it's not his fault. He's poor. See what they, they do with this. I mean, I said this sort of slow progression for Optic is certainly favoring them. The longer they sort of take this game on, Highcap does put the rage. He's back in again onto these racks. Gets a bit of damage out. Still feeling pretty confident with that Aegis. He's getting closer and closer to having the gold for the Assault Karas. At the same time, top lane is also being forced in by uh, the army of Siege Creeps, as you can see there. Yeah, there we go. Those catapults doing a lot of damage. It's almost dead. All right, sure. And this this makes kind of sense because Lot Stealer with the Aegis, because he can just go in and yeah. poke like this. There's no way they can kill him now. But in that sense, it, it, get, it makes a little bit of sense. It just seems like TNC have just been unable to make a play for the most part of this game. I don't know, is this down to the draft or is this just down to the certain lanes? Like, what has sort of made the game like this where TNC are just having to react to Optic, but in a sense, they, they can't really react at all. Optic are just getting away with everything. A lot of it is because of the Doom. Normally, you just Doom someone, you can come in from the side and just Doom someone and initiate the fight somehow like that, but he's got the Chen who completely counters it. They can't really go on anyone. It's he needs to somehow bait to oh, go on them so I he mean, can do this and uh it's i mean it's, it's not going to save the racks i mean they may be able to burn the ages but all right but that second life he just needs one more hit onto that and uh racks and gonna, oh jumps in jumps out and in fact they'll take the fight instead the grip there on the doom they do get the barracks here optic a punch into samage samage will fall Samage will buy back Get straight out. away. Optic and D. They've got what they came for. Pycat is getting caught out in the front. Defensive nightmare for PPD buys him some time, but he's been doomed. Pycat Leave will him. fall. Get the first big kill. Can they get 33 as well? They've got the sentry down. They will get 33 oh. also. Double kill for Cuckoo. But Optic Gaming, they got what they came for. They they get that full set of the racks oh, in the middle lane. And, and Doom has to buy back. Yeah, and Doom uh, goes for a really smart. Creep here, he's going for the perch to counter and initiate that. Then back makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, but it's kind of sometimes hard to see who he stands back because there's so many effects going on. So if he's not paying atten attention to Chen, he can easily like see it. And... Yeah, still a really good creep here. Already racked, 33 minutes. TNC able to strike back a little bit though with those two core kills, getting the tier one tower mid. I push on a little bit more. Still with 30 seconds without a cat and 33 being in the game. Able to clamp something back from Optic off the back of it, but they for sure will not quite get the same amount as, as Optic were able to get from that mid lane push. Unless PVD has mm. come forward. 
the stun from the center, holding back Tamax a little bit, and there's the send. We'll get PPD back to safety. Instantly actually TP back towards this tip right. tower. They want to fight. CCNC ready to go in. He has the rupture onto Raven. Raven being safe and out Coward. by the cold embrace. No damage from CCNC coming through at the moment. Now he'll continue to punch it. Can he finish off the gyro? One more touch would do it, but he's being controlled. In fact, Raven, he'll still do for now. Finally fall. They'll lose Raven. They've also lost Cuckoo on the side of TNC. Buybacks coming out from Optic Gaming. And Zai will fall. Damage trying for TP out of the raw. On the TK, pushing the Doom to the side, cancelling the Doom's TP. And the Troll Summoner holding down this TK through the BKB wall. And then Optic Gaming get four of them. Yeah, this is really good because now they're going to force buybacks here. Kind of hurts them, Optic, because they're like, oh no, we had to use buybacks for this. But just push, push right now, and you're going to force the buybacks so it's even. So it's fine. And. I gotta say, uh, CCNC there, he's running in with BKB and then he clicks Blade Mill, which makes no sense because no one's gonna hit you when you're BKB. If you had the BKB or Blade Mill at the end of the BKB, that could have been so much different from, for him. Uh, a little bit questionable Blade Mill use there by him. I press to the buttons, you know how happens. Yeah. Space roll and uh, yeah, here's the buyback. I saw they get one out. buyback. So we'll have Raven back up in a second. We got Winter Warrior and Ultimate, so what happened last time with that? And we got Oli Pike back. back. Oh no! Oh. Look at those right clicks from Zart wrecking Pike. No, no, Pike is fine. He stands his ground. Where's the Skyrim result? So you can see BKB and Blade Mail, your combo again. That you, you don't approve our Bulldog. He pops at the same time, walks in, walks out. Hmm. All right. They can finish up the Rax Optic. It's the full five mana TNC back up and alive. As the hat got heal comes through. Armel has found an opener. The Doom drop down onto Pike. And Pike has sprayed in time though. So he'll just fight through it. He looks towards Sam H chasing down the Doom. Sam H has the scorched up. Will be enough to speed him up to the high ground and get him back to safety. But the, he continues to move on. Pike does not care about being doomed at all. It's not doing much damage to him, and now it's worn off. So Pycat's ready to go again with another Rage. They're taking down Armel. Raven will be the McKay, but they have the detention. Raven will fall. CMT finds the triple kill as Optic clean up a second set of barracks on this bottom lane. There's two dead on TNC, and they do not have buyback. No buyback. Looking uh, kind of over, honestly. This is, I don't know how they defend this. You see, Optic's got so many teamfight items, so... You can't kill anyone. Yeah, they, they, they've played it perfectly. They, they so the draft, the technique, and it was a strange game because that GG is called Optic. It's like that. We'll take the game because for the, for the majority of the game, the kills they favoured TNC. The net worth lead was never really that massive for Optic, but just because of their line and because of the fact that the TNC were just unable to do anything. TNC could not make aggressive plays themselves. It was always at the back of what Optic Gaming were able to achieve. It, it really just, it just seemed like. PPD and the boys were driving that game for the, for the entirety of it. Absolutely, and just too many teamfight items. They couldn't kill anyone. And, uh, you know, the sandbag completely countering yes. Doom. Getting completely destroyed by that. And, hey, what are you going to do? I mean, I did. Surely you look at that, and we, we know other teams have been doing so. The, the draft. Do you really let this team play Chen? 